Take a look at these guys. We've just heard that the guys at Boston Dynamics have given their Atlas robot an interesting upgrade. Turns out that they have just given it a new set of hands. These aren't just any ordinary hands. As time goes on, they could prove to be one of the most advanced robotic hands in the world today. Such an innovative tool and its amazing capabilities have left us captivated. Join us as we take a deep look at the GR2, one of the most wonderful inventions to come out of this rapidly developing industry, Boston Dynamics and their state-of-the-art robot hands. Let's start off with what Boston Dynamics has for us. Remember Atlas, their bipedal humanoid robot? When it was first revealed to us back in 2013, we were fascinated with it because of how it was able to pull off some acrobatic parkour routines. Well, the Waltham, Massachusetts-based company has impressed us once more because rather than focusing on its range of movements like before, Boston Dynamics have been focused on how their humanoid robot was going to handle things. That is why they were pleased to announce that they had been working on giving the robot hands that had real human-like dexterity. Thanks to this change in focus, Boston Dynamics were able to reveal that they had created what they described to be a brand new second generation gripper, referred to as the GR2. This groundbreaking gripper has taken what Atlas can do with its hands to the next level. What do we mean? Well, let's do a bit of a backstory, shall we? Once upon a time, Atlas functioned using hydraulics. After some time though, it was eventually converted in a way that allowed it to go fully electric. This switch allowed Boston Dynamics to rethink what the robot's hands could do. This means that they were more focused on manipulation movements such as grabbing, holding, twisting, or releasing items. This may sound easy enough, but the truth is that such movements make creating grippers very difficult. This difficulty made Boston Dynamics take things one step at a time. At first, their first shot at tackling this problem came in the form of the GR1. This GR1 had three fingers, and during their time working with it, the engineers were able to learn a whole lot about mounting, ruggedness, and failure modes. Thanks to all this knowledge, they were able to correct a lot of mistakes when they came up with the GR2. Thanks to their knowledge, they were able to make sure that the GR2 came with seven degrees of freedom. Aside from this, the GR2 also has seven actuators, two per finger, for three fingers that means six, and an extra actuator for an articulated opposable thumb. As with humans, you will find that that thumb means a lot to the robot. After all, without that thumb, the robot just won't be able to hold on to things as well as it should. Apart from these actuators, the GR2 also comes with tactile sensing in the foot to have something that could be compared to the sense of touch that humans have of other fingertips. This allows the robot hand to have something similar to the sense of touch that humans and other living things have. These sensors allow the robot to detect defamation. This is important because it allows the robot to know how much force it is applying to something at any given point in time. This is necessary because it will allow the robot to know how much force it is using to hold something without doing any damage to it. It works so well that if something should fall, the robot will get the cue to pick it up. Fascinating, right? It is actually almost like a human being. Interestingly enough, you may be fascinated to find that the GR2 has cameras in its palm. This was done so that it could have something of a visual backup that could help it work better when dealing with spaces that are too tight or obscure for its main vision systems to work with. Another interesting fact about the gripper is that all actuation is within it. This is great because this means that you can mount or remove it without problems. That said, the GR2 was made to be rugged. This allows it to fall or handle other sorts of impact without getting damaged easily. This truly represents fantastic work from the guys at Boston Dynamic. With that in mind, when we take another look at the design of the GR1 and the GR2, we just can't help but notice the glaring difference, that thumb. Remember when we mentioned that it was added to the GR2? With this thumb, it is a lot easier for the robot to handle some things. The engineers did ponder on whether or not it made sense for them to add more fingers to the GR2, but they decided against this because more fingers meant that the gripper will be more complex than it may need to be. As such, the three fingers and the thumb in the G2 are perfect for now. With these features, they know that their robot will be ahead of the curve, especially when compared with other robots that may be in circulation today. This is especially the case when it comes to the interaction with objects. It can pick up objects, rotate them, and grasp other objects better than anything out there today. They even made sure that they made left and right hand versions of the gripper so that it could manipulate things better than their peers. 
Such moves will definitely make these hands the standard bearer when it comes to robot hands, and if they work well, the guys at Boston Dynamics predict that over time, there will be a sweet spot in actuation, sensing, and physical design. Looking at the hands, we can see how the Atlas robot as a whole looked even more impressive when Boston Dynamics showed us what it can do in this demo. We were amazed because of how it was able to pick things up, even though they were irregular shapes. The robot also impressed everyone when they saw how the GR2 helped it adjust things in real time. It could also thread a needle and assemble different components of things with a high level of control. This is wonderful, especially as it gives the GR2 some sort of nuance that helps it make sure that it applies the right amount of strength and control when it comes to handling different objects in real time. This allows it to carry out a lot of tasks that may seem easy to us but are rather difficult to these robots. With that in mind, we know that safety is still a major concern when it comes to creating such components. For example, take a look at this demo in which a humanoid robot that was created by a rival company seemed to go berserk on one of its developers. Talk about scenes from I, Robot. This served to be a dramatic reminder as to how these robot testing sessions could go horrifically awry. Considering this, you will find that the guys at Boston Dynamics have made it imperative for their engineers to prioritize rigorous testing on their robots. They also want their workers to work on fallback modes so that they could avoid such a frightening scene in their camps. Seems fair enough, right? Especially as we would all hate it if one of these robots were to seriously injure these engineers or these developers while they were hard at work. They would have to make sure that everything is up and running without risks of injuries if they would want to make sure that they aren't run out of the market by their competitors. Companies such as Tesla and their Optimus humanoid robot, as well as Unitree's G1, are hot on their trail. Speaking of the G1, did you guys know about its anti-gravitational mode? This allows it to avoid all sorts of serious injury should it fall over or should it be faced with a powerful blow. When we think about it, such capabilities could work even better if the G1 came with the GR2. Same goes for Tesla's Optimus, which has exhibited a decent level of balance and control in several of the recently released demos. If they ever want to take the robot's capabilities to the next level, it may be best for them to see what the GR2 could do for them once it is fixed on their robot. Indeed, if things go well, we could very well see the GR2 on all other robots. Let's see what the GR2 will fare in the world of AI and robotics in the years to come.